Hello, hello, hello. Today we are going to do a quick overview of keywords and SEO in Go Imagine. One thing I did want to let everyone know about, I'm, I'm going to start a series on uh, specifically Go Imagine SEO and keywords. Uh, I think that's something that a lot of you are interested in and curious about, and there's a little bit of mystery around it, so we're going to really dive into that. So this is going to be first uh, the first one of a few videos like this. Uh, I can't say how long it'll go. It might just be three videos. It might be five videos. Uh, we'll see where it goes. But to start today, I went to help.goimagine.com and then I just searched the word SEO and I came up with this screen here. There is another section that mentions SEO that's talking about Google search. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm just going to talk about what Go Imagine says about SEO within the Go Imagine platform. So SEO is search engine optimization. And basically what that means is when someone's on Go Imagine and they're searching for something, uh, how do they find your listings? How does that work? So we're going to see what Go Imagine has to say about this and then we'll kind of go from there. So the best thing to do when you want to know how uh, how to best optimize for any platform, whether it's a social media platform or somewhere you're selling or, or something else, is to look for these these help articles and also follow the uh, people who are really in charge of that stuff on that platform. Um, so follow John Lincoln and follow. Um, Stephanie Romke and you know follow those people on Maker Circle um, that way when they post something you will get a notification and they usually will post updates and let us know what's going on first uh, for example just yesterday Stephanie Romke posted about uh, changes in categories so and there was a link directly in her post and she posted on Facebook she posted on Maker Circle so you know that's good information that you'll get first whereas if you're just a casual scroller through the Facebook group or whatever you might miss that you might not see it until it's way later which has happened to me several times I've not been up and up on my information but I found this article and I found it to be really interesting so I'm just going to read it um, hopefully it can be read on the screen as well so the go imagine search algorithm considers many aspects when fetching customer results some of these include time on the marketplace the number of views the number of hearts, the number of sales a listing has, and of course, relevance of search keywords. Search keywords holds the most weight in determining which listings appear at the top of search. And they've got that bold and underlined. So they really want us to know the search keywords is the most important thing uh, to get your item to the top of the search results. Um, exact matches will appear first followed by partial matches. Doing research on what common phrases people search to find your item will help you greatly. And I did make a video prior to this uh, a year ago or so about E-Rank. I believe it's the video says something like um, what sh researching what you should sell on Go Imagine. I like to research before I make the items these days. I used to always just make what I wanted to make and then I would do the research. But if you research in advance and find out what's popular, what's trending, and you can do something that fits into what you make, um, that is the best way to do it. But you can do it either way. So um, yeah, search keywords is the most important, not the number of sales, not the number of hearts or views. Whereas, you know, we know that those things have a lot of weight on Etsy, for example. Uh, the number of sales listings has, you know, can really greatly uh, increase the listing quality score and it can really push that item up. Where it's not necessarily the case here, it does have some weight. And of course, they're never going to tell us exactly. They're not going to give us a mathematical equation and give us all that information that's never going to happen. So this is the best that we're going to get. Um, so setting up search keywords. There are two ways to enter keywords. And this is uh, showing examples from the old dashboard. The new dashboard is a little bit different. So I will make a separate video going over that more in detail. But for the use the old dashboard for your search keywords right now or don't. It's not that big of a deal. Do what you want. I, it's not really a huge difference, but it shows you're entering your search words or phrases, separating them by a comma. So serving 
space board, comma, space cheese, space board, comma, and so on. Um, the most important keywords should be listed first. Now, this is a huge key. This is not, you know, bold or anything, but this is something that, that I'm going to do some experiments with. It doesn't make a huge difference if the very first group of keywords uh, or the very first tag, if I'm using the new dashboard, you know, it's, is that going to have more weight? Is that going to change where my listing is? Uh, there is a 30-word limit using this method. This method up here is a 30-word limit. This method allows the algorithm to match from any phrase together based on the customer search to provide the best results. With that said, an exact match will always appear higher in search over a partial match. It is okay to repeat words, especially if it is a very common search phrase. Um, so, you know, they've got the word board in here more than one time, but I'm sure if they looked into it, uh, serving board and cheese board both have, you know, something that people look for, cutting board, you know, these are things people are looking for. So having the word board in there more than once is okay. Um, if the customer searches for, oh, and then here's their example of mix and matching. So if a customer searches for serving board, this item will appear at the top of the search. Uh, if the customer searches for serving platter, it will still appeal, appear in search, but will not be as high in the results. Uh, so they don't have the word serving platter in in their tags here, but they have serving board, and then they also have um, just platter by itself right here. So it, it can it could take those two words and make that into into a match. It's just not an exact match. Um, and then the second option is entering your search words using underscores within the phrases. And so this is just instead of a space between the the multiple word phrases, there's an underscore. I don't know if there's any difference here. So this is what your search keywords will look like if you do an Etsy import. A comma is still used to separate each phrase, um, but apparently the underscore will be there. The search algorithm reads the underscores between words within a phrase as spaces. This will allow you to have 30 phrases, but will not match words from different phrases so, as it would be in the above. Okay, so if it has the underscore, that's only going to do exact match. Let's read this again. <laughs> this will allow you to have 30 phrases, but will not match words from different phrases as it would in the above. So an exact match phrase will appear at the top of the search, but a partial match of the phrase will appear much lower. Your phrases should still be listed in order of importance, with the first words being the most important. Example, if a customer searches serving board, this item will appear at the top of search. If the customer searches charcuterie, however the heck you say that word, I've never been good at that. It will still, still appear in results since it's a partial phrase, but may not be ranked as high. If the customer searches serving platter, it may not appear in the results or will appear much further down as two partial phrases. So serving platter, this is the exact same thing basically as this except for it has the underscores, but serving platter may not show up at all, it says. So to me, this this tells me I don't want to use these underscores. That's kind of strange that they even keep that like that because, yeah, if someone searched serving platter, it might not show up and both those words are in there. It really should. Oh, look, we've got new dashboard. And we got the new dashboard. When the new dashboard is released, uh, which is in beta right now, search keywords will become search tags. This will turn phrases or words into their own search tags. We are making this improvement in preparation for updating the current algorithm to be more sophisticated. The tag limit in the new dashboard is 20. This information is good to remember when creating listings in the old dashboard. So, and the new dashboard, I've, I've tried this out a lot. There is a total of 20 tags allowed it allows you to do up to 25 characters per tag, but once you get over 240 or 255 characters, it seems like it varies for some reason, um, but when you get to that number, it, it and then you hit save, it gives you an error and says you're you're over, it says 255, you're over 255 in the, in the tags. Um, so there's a little bit of confusion there because that doesn't really add up because if you were to have 20 tags, and you put each of them for 20 characters, that'd be like 480, 480 characters. And so it doesn't, it doesn't match up. I'm sure they'll work that out. 
I'm sure it'll work out. So please note the new dashboard is currently in beta, beta, will be released to all in the near future. This information is being provided in preparation for the release. And then they have here setting up your product listings with good SEO for search engines. And this is talking about uh, Google and things like that. And that's the part I didn't want to get into. So this is what they're telling us um, when it comes to our keywords. And this could change. We need to always keep in mind that Go Imagine can change things whenever they feel like it. It's new. It's growing. Things are going to change. You know, it's, it's inevitable. So don't get steadfast in this idea. We need to watch for updates or changes. But in my opinion, um, right now, the best way to enter in your search keywords is to go into the old dashboard, which is the goimagine.com slash vendor.php and use that dashboard and to enter your uh, search keywords and to not have underscores. And that's my just my opinion based on what I've read. Um, I'm going to do a lot of experiments. I've already started doing it where I'm putting in everything into a listing and then I'm seeing where it ranks under certain keywords. For example, if I enter uh, sunflower decor up here, where does my sunflower sign fall within that um, search term when I just when I just search it? And uh, a new thing with Go Imagine, they don't show how many search results anymore. They used to have a number there that would tell you how, how many items came up for that, and they don't anymore. You can still figure it out because you've got 96 items per page, you know, and so if you're on the second page, you know, at the first spot, then you're spot 97, you know, basically. So you can, you can count them and figure it out, but it's a little bit slower that way. But uh, that's all I have for this video. I just wanted to start out by showing you what Go Imagine is telling us about search keywords. This is the, the information that they are providing to us and we need to review this. So go in here, take a minute to review it again, um, you know, and play around with it. I really think uh, experimenting is the best way to figure out what works best for, for your shop. And a really important thing to not do when you're doing this is don't try to rank high for everything. Um, if your item isn't really, really that thing, you know, if I don't, if I have something that doesn't have a sunflower on it and I put sunflower decor and I try to get ranking for that because I know sunflowers are popular or mushrooms or whatever, cottage core, don't call your item something that it's not. And, and really look at the other items that are in this category and ask yourself, does my item belong? Because if you throw your, your stuff in and it really doesn't belong, uh, it's just going to scare shoppers away. They're not going to want to be on this platform and shop here if they get here and when they search something, they're finding a bunch of stuff that's not what they were looking for at all. Um, uh, sunflower decor is a little bit more of a broad term. And of course, you know, gift for mom can be anything. Um, but, you know, just just be aware of what you're doing. If you've got uh, something in there as Christmas decor and it's a sunflower, you know, but you want to you, you want it to be a Christmas present and you want people to see it or whatever, you're you're really hurting. Go imagine by doing that. So please don't do that. Uh, so that's all I have for today. If you found this interesting or helpful in any way, please give it a like. That really helps me out. I'm going to make at least two more videos about keywords and SEO. Um, number one thing I'm going to do with this is do this research and I will show you in real time. I changed this in my listing. What happens to where, where it ranks for this keyword? And we'll go through and do that with a number of items and, uh, you know, try to figure out kind of what holds the most weight and what's most important. That's, that's all I have for today, though. Uh, thank you so much for watching.